Hey guys, welcome back to the food lab. You know, I don't always drink Dos Equis, but when I do, it's usually with some fish tacos. Like the ones I'm about to show you how to make. I'm using Mahi Mahi, because it's delicious. Uh, and I'm gonna make a very authentic guacamole, a, a pureed tomato salsa, and a lime crema, a scallion lime crema, which is gonna be delicious. The flavors are gonna work beautifully, your friends will love it. Very, very easy dish, and I'll see you in the kitchen. Guacamole is not about the lime, it's not about the honey, it's not about, you know, what things you're adding to the guacamole. It's really about the avocado. So to really bring out the flavor of the avocado, we keep the rest of the company ingredients very simple. Today, I'm using uh, three Haas avocados, which I've peeled, sliced, diced. Um, you can watch the video of this, uh, how to cut an avocado uh, on the food lab as well. Um, I'm going to use fresh lime juice, kosher salt, black pepper, and uh, very, very, very finely minced garlic. Uh, I'm also going to save some cilantro here. So basically, start with this. Gather your herbs up, slice them very thinly. Just roll them like a cigar, and slice them down really fine. Okay. Not an exact science. All right, so to this avocado, which I've broken up here, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of chopped garlic, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, just a pinch of salt, not too much. We're not salting the avocado, we're seasoning it, okay? Um, a little bit of this lime juice, I'm probably gonna go with an ounce or two, okay? Now, I'm gonna finish that with some cilantro and some black pepper. So once you have your black pepper in there, I would go at it with a fork and just sort of smash everything together. All right. Taste for seasoning. That tastes like avocado. I think it's perfect. There you have it. Authentic Mexican guacamole. This is a very simple uh, cooked salsa as opposed to a fresh salsa like a pico de gallo where everything is raw and just chopped up and mixed together. So I'm going to cook everything together and then I'm going to puree it. But I'm going to start with some olive oil, about a tablespoon. You want to coat the bottom of your pan and then in go your sliced red onions. That perfect sizzle. Okay. You're not searing anything, you're just sweating and simmering, so. Okay, once I start to smell my onions, I'm gonna add my garlic. Uh, you're gonna add 18 cloves of garlic, finely minced. Well, I, actually, it really doesn't matter because you're gonna be, I'm gonna puree this entire mixture in the end. So, enough garlic to Get everything going, and then to that I will I'm gonna let this go for a minute. And once it turns into a translucent mass, I'm gonna start adding my other ingredients. After your onions have had time to sweat with your garlic, and they look about, you're gonna add your peppers. And I have about 12 to 16 ounces of serranos and jalapenos that have just been chopped up. No big deal. To get those in there too. Anybody with um, anybody who's really sensitive to heat would probably want to leave the kitchen at this point because you're going to be filling the air with some very pungent um, capsaicin vapor. So you're going to get you're going to sweat the, the peppers now, basically get them mostly cooked, and in a few minutes we're going to add the tomatoes and the dried peppers. So once your peppers are sauteed with your um, onions and your garlic, I'm going to add the, um, I have about 30 ounces of canned tomatoes in here. No big deal. Canned tomatoes, whatever. I have um, an equal quantity of 
diced fresh cherry tomatoes. These are super sweet. Just chop them in half. Basically, you want to get them in there and just sort of mix everything around. Let that get a little bit hotter. I'm going to turn that up just a bit. So these dried chilies here, I have um, dried guajillo chilies. I'm going to take off the stem and just sort of rip them up in there. Okay. These are not very hot. I would say they're probably medium, mild. These, um, these, however, the chili de arbol, take off the stem. These are a little bit hotter. I'll just basically rip off the stem, crush them up in there. Uh, nothing fancy, because you're going to puree everything again. I have about... I have about four guajillos and six chile de arbol in here. You can find this in your grocery store's uh, dried chili pepper aisle. Good luck finding that one. So mix everything together. Okay? You have a lot of fresh vegetables in there, so you need to season them. Plenty of kosher salt for all of the tomatoes that are in there and uh, some black pepper. Freshly ground, of course. No effort necessary. Also available in the food lab store. Okay, mix that up. And just let that simmer until it is uh, a single homogenous goo of tomato goodness. So this lime crema is a, a great way to temper the heat that you're made, that I'm creating with the uh, the roasted tomato salsa, the puree rather. <clears throat> uh, I've got sour cream here, approximately 12, 14 ounces of it. Um, very straightforward. You can use creme fraiche if you don't live in a place with an acne down the road. Um, anyway, lime juice. I have about that's three ounces, approximately. I'm gonna put that in there. I just want to, just want to sort of fold it in there, give it a stir. Um, with the introduction of acid, of course, you have to salt to offset fat, and then fresh black pepper. Okay, and to this I will add my scallion, which I've washed. Just give that a fine chop. And then some cilantro, which you're going to perform a similar maneuver on, just slightly finer. Okay. And once your herbs are chopped, you're going to add this to the crema. That will be our scallion lime cilantro. All right, I'm just going to fold this in. So I will also add some honey just to balance it out because there's a lot of acidity and salt going on. I'm going to sort of mix it in as this honey is added. All right, I've just added about three tablespoons of honey in there. No big deal. Okay. Let's taste it one more time. Should have brought everything together. It's all about balance. Perfect. The final step of your pureed salsa, of course, is to puree it. So everything's been cooking for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, things are pretty much, the onions are indiscernible, the tomatoes have popped out of their skin, and the um, dehydrated peppers have rehydrated. So it's time to puree. So I got this lovely food processor here, the Cuisinart, of course. I'm gonna add my salsa to it. All right, I'm going to take some insurance measures here, cover it up, 
give it a couple pulses. Okay, check the consistency, taste for seasoning. Got great heat, perfect acidity. Needs a little bit of salt. There are about two teaspoons in there. Black pepper. And then I'm gonna grill it. All right. Okay, that salt really brings everything together. I'm gonna take it off and carefully. We'll, we'll start with a spoon and I'll dump the rest. But there you have it, some pureed salsa with your hot peppers and onions and garlic. Delicious. And let this cool down before you put it on your fish tacos, okay? I'm gonna show you how to sear some mahi mahi. I have, uh, about four pounds of mahi mahi that I sliced up into inch wide, five to six inch long strips. Uh, perfect to put one in each taco. I'm gonna get my pan hot. I have it on medium high heat here. It's been heating up for a while, but the key is um, making sure your pan is not so cold that your fish sticks and doesn't sear. So always put the Tip down and then lay your fish down away from you. It's a good habit. It's not going to kill you. Just like that. All right. We're using a non-stick pan, fortunately. If you're using stainless steel, uh, you know, your fish will release itself from the surface of the pan when it's ready to be flipped. So, I'm going to let this go for a minute. I have my fish spatula here. That's cool. There you go. I want it to be a little bit darker than this, so I'm going to back. Give it some more time. About three minutes on each side gets you where you need to be, depending on how thick you cut your mahi-mahi or your fish. Basically, when it's firm, it's ready. The carryover heat will cook it the rest of the way. The pieces of fish are so small. And I'm using fresh fish, not using anything frozen. Um, find the flavor is so much better. The final step is assembly, as always. I have uh, four corn tortillas here. I love corn tortillas because they're a lot more authentic than a flour tortilla. Um, but you can use whatever you'd like, you know, uh, your favorite flatbread tortilla thing. I have five basic components. The first I'm going to start with is guacamole because that's the heaviest. Um, that's going to go first onto the tortillas here. Just a generous spoonful. You know, we want to work like a factory so that you do every step once and then you do the next step once. You're not you know, doing the same thing over and over again. So for these I have, uh, the next is to add my mahi mahi. Just like that. All right, next, this beautiful pureed salsa, which I've made, maybe a tablespoon and a half like that. I'm going to top it with some, some of this scallion cilantro and lime crema. Okay, and then I have some very, very thinly sliced onions. You can see through them, that's what's important. I'm going to garnish with that. 
just a couple of slices there. Okay, and then uh, cilantro, fresh cilantro here. Okay, and then I finish everything with a little squeeze of lime. Then just like that, onto my platter. So there you have it. There's our final product. Some beautiful fish tacos here. I've used corn for this platter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do flour for the next one for the guests who prefer, prefer flour tortillas. But um, you know, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and dig in. That is so perfectly balanced. You're gonna love these tacos. I'll see you in the kitchen.